Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rushcliffe series. This is the southernmost district in Nottinghamshire and it contains 59 civil parishes of England. And there's some corkers down here. Let's dive in and check one out. Welcome back to Rushcliffe again, people. Now, you may remember a few episodes ago in Thoroton, we saw a dovecote with a thatched roof. Well, here in this place, which is not too far away from Thoroton, actually, you can see we have another dovecote. Now, that one doesn't have a thatched roof, but arguably this one is more famous than that one. You'll find it in the parish of Sibthorpe. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Sibthorpe, Sibbers Farm. This week in Rushcliffe, we're starting to make our way into the Vale of Beaver again. Sibthorpe is the first of a run of four villages that are extremely small and all about farming, which line the northeastern edge of the district. Of the four, it's this one which has the most interesting bits and bobs. A few weeks ago, we met Nottinghamshire's only remaining thatched dovecote in Thoroton. Just up the road from that, there's a second which stands behind Sibthorpe's church. Although not thatched, it's arguably much more famous because of what it was once attached to. In 1360, this part of Nottinghamshire experienced a terrible famine. In order to prevent another, the dovecote was built to provide a reliable supply of meat, eggs and fertiliser by the monks of Sibthorpe College. The college complex stood just to the south of the church and nothing remains of it today except a few earthworks and some dry moats and fish ponds. The dovecote though still stands and it's one of the only visible reminders of Sibthorpe's medieval importance. Well, other than the church of course. Otherwise, it's a quiet rural farming village. It was associated with the Bernal family, who lived in a now demolished mansion. Their name, though, still lives on here, thanks to a modern cul-de-sac. Let's get walking. We start in the far northwestern corner of Sibthorpe at this road sign outside an old forge. There are some great views here too over the surrounding farmland. Even though this is a tiny place, Sibthorpe is still served by a bus. Like Flintham, Sibthorpe is on the route of the 354 between Newark and Bingham. Most people work away from the village. The latest census in 2021 recorded a population of just over 100 people here, and industrially it's always been a farming village. Nothing has really changed in recent times. It's still as reliant on the farmland today as it was at the turn of the century. Bernal is an important local name. The family once held land in Sibthorpe and owned a huge mansion. That mansion now no longer stands and there are no visible remains. Aside from Bernal Close, Sibthorpe is composed of two main roads, Main Street and Church Lane, upon which 90% of all the property here is based. On the wall of a building where the two roads meet, we have the parish notice board. Historically, Sibthorpe has just three notable things. The dovecote, the church, and the site of a college. And they're all this way. 
So effectively, after coming around that bend, you've virtually walked through the entire village. Sibthorpe is really, really small. It's typical of these villages around here in this part of Rushcliffe, as you'll see in the next few episodes. They're all very, very tiny places. However, of course, this one still has two major landmarks left. One of them is the church, which is where we're going next. And then, of course, the dovecote, which is behind the church. Sibthorpe only has two listed buildings, but both are Grade 1. The first is the church, dedicated to St Peter. It features a low 13th century tower and a slightly later chancel, mainly 14th century. On the north wall of the chancel is a wonderful Easter sepulchre. Close to the church, there was once a college of chantry priests. It was founded in 1324 by Thomas de Sibthorpe, with chantries dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John the Baptist and St Thomas the Martyr. It was surrendered to Henry VIII in 1540. There are some visible remains south of the church, like earthworks and former fish ponds. And of course, there's the Sibthorpe dovecote. With its substantial three foot thick walls, this 30 foot tall feathery fortress is all that remains of the medieval collegiate complex. This was built as a comfy residence for cherished pigeons in 1370, making it more than 650 years old. A solitary structure, people often mistake this for a disused windmill or a Rapunzel esque fairy tale prison cell. It once housed over 1,200 pigeons, and the monks built it in response to a famine in 1360. It was intended to provide an unlimited supply of meat, eggs, and fertilizer to safeguard against future starvation. Now, of course, as always with my videos, I'm never all that extensive. It's just always a flying visit through these places. And of course, Sibthorpe is probably one of the, the shortest episodes I've ever made. This information board here, which is uh, on the edge of the churchyard, will tell you a lot more about the place and about the Dovco and all sorts of other things. Don't know whether you can read it um, like this. If you can pause the video, you might be able to zoom in and see some of the... Uh, the writing there it's probably not very clear because it's quite mucky this board but if you are here at the dovecote this is well worth a read it's take you about 10 maybe 20 minutes to go through the whole lot so yeah there's uh, there's always more there's always more to find out about these places and that's really it to Sibthorpe we are now going to move on to the next one and as I said earlier the villages in this part of Rushcliffe are really really small and if you think this one's small well there's some smaller ones to come yet after the road passes the dovecote and the church, it crosses the Carr Dyke, which splits Sibthorpe from a small hamlet on the next bend. This is known as Top Green, and it's here where most of the college's earthwork and fish pond remains can be found, in fields behind the houses on the left-hand side of the road. It's all on private land though, so we can't really see anything of it. Interestingly, Sibthorpe Parish also has some modern fish ponds, but unlike the college complex, the ones here today aren't for providing any kind of sustenance. Off Long Hedge Lane, which forms the parish boundary with Hawksworth, are the Portland Fishing Lakes. There are eight lakes here in total, four of which are named after birds. The newest lake is Buzzard, which opened in 2017. Portland is a popular fishery, and it's often booked out for matches. It's got a cafe and a bar too, called Kingfisher, which offers food at weekends. And that's it for Sibthorpe. I'll see you next week, folks, in another equally small village. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out